This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on that later. Hi, this isn't a real intro. I'm just gonna come in really quick and say thank you to my patrons. Your names are on screen. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'll also put the rewards on screen. Every month we do fun stuff. You get physical rewards mailed to you, a postcard and a sticker. There's also an exclusive video, a podcast and other fun stuff. So make sure you check that out. If you wanna support me a little bit more, you want some goodies, whatever. I also really quickly do wanna say, this is a very different video. Uh, I It's very experimental. Like I have no idea <laughs> if it's gonna work. I would love your feedback. I would love to hear if there's anything you feel like is lacking content. Like I would love to hear feedback about what did and did not work in this video. I would like to continue doing um, and I just don't know if it worked because I have never done anything like this. I, I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but I did have a lot of fun. I'm really excited for you to see it. I hope you enjoy. Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, I am filming on my new camera. I got a vlog camera. I'm really excited about it. This is the first time that I'm using it. Just, I'm very, very excited. Um, but so I got it for a re I mean, I got it for multiple reasons. One is so I can, it's much more discreet than my camera, but I'm testing it out today. I'm doing this whole thing. If you didn't see it, I made a video all about my goals for 2024, my art goals. And one of my big things is that I want to start creating, working on creating some sort of body of work. As an artist, I've never done like my own art really. I do a lot of small sketchbook stuff and I do, I recreate pieces. I've never like made my own paintings. Do you know what I mean? Creativity, originality, that's one of my weaknesses as an artist. Whether you agree or not, that's just something that I, as I am, as, as an artist, when I work, that's my obstacle. That's the thing that I keep running into that I'm not good at, that I'm not confident in. Um, that's my main obstacle is I'm not, I don't know what I want to do. And for this goal that I have of creating like a body of work, like I, I want something that I can put into galleries and my portfolio. I want it cohesive. It's not going to be done necessarily this year, but I want to figure out what, what am I even doing? So I have this idea. Um, and I'm gonna use my new vlog camera for it. I want to go out and, and do like some creativity exploration, some creativity diaries, some ex creativity experimentation. The things that I find interesting or inspiring in any way, no matter how minor, I wanna go out and expose myself to it and do research and collect source material, collect references. This process is very much inspired by, oh my God, I've talked about her so many times. I know her name, but I'm, I'm forgetting it right now. So I'm gonna put it right here. Um, but it's inspired by her. I watched a video where she went on a trip and like she she was doing her series. I'll also link that video down below. I've referenced it multiple times now, but she was doing this video where she was making like these really quick abstract pieces based off of a, a large collection of footage she had taken while she was on a trip. And she had a collage of the, those that footage in front of her while she just worked in her sketchbook. And I was like, that's amazing. And that's my goal. I brought my sketchbook today. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna try, but I am going to the Florida Aquarium in Tampa and I'm just gonna collect resources and inspiration and footage and take reference photos and i brought my sketchbook i'm going to take some notes and the goal is to fish fish inspire me fish are really cool and i think they're funky and fun and i'm going to expose myself to them and i'm going to do some creativity research and decide is there anything here is there anything here that i can make art out of and i'm gonna take you with me so without further ado um the car's getting hot and i'm sure the camera is not enjoying the heat either so without further ado uh we're gonna go we're gonna get in there. <laughs> I had a handful of ideas for places I want to go and things I want to quote unquote research, write, or experience in my pursuit of searching for inspiration and creativity. Some ideas are super vague and I don't even know how I would do them as an experience overall, but I guess I'll figure it out when it when it comes time. You know what I mean? That's a future me problem. But yeah, I really don't have that many ideas, like concrete ideas. I'm kind of hoping that one will kind of lead to another and that inspiration will spark inspiration. And the more I do things, the more ideas I'll have. My overall hope is that this whole process ends up being really natural and really intuitive. I think that is going to lead to the artwork being natural and real. So we'll see how it goes. So I talked pretty quickly and generally about what my overall goal was in going to the aquarium. I want to develop some sort of body of work, a cohesive portfolio, a series, something along those lines. It doesn't necessarily have to be a finished series of paintings that will be like gallery ready or sellable. Um, it doesn't have to be like a really, really good thing. I'm really just starting this whole process. So I don't know, you know how it's gonna be. I don't know what it's gonna end up with. 
You know, I don't know how many steps I'll have to go through before I even feel remotely ready to do something that is very complete. So I don't, I don't know what the overall goal is right now. But I do know that I wanna make progress and I wanna start getting comfortable with creating ideas from scratch and transforming feelings and inspiration into pieces of art. This whole thing is not something I've really ever done before, like at all, and I knew it was gonna be really, really difficult for me. So my whole thought is I have no idea what I want to make art about, especially in my life right now. I've been in such a rut with burnout and just like life stuff. Sometimes I feel like there's no creativity in me at all. Like I'm not good at being creative and coming up with my own concepts. Even if I feel good about the art that I'm making, I feel like there's nothing new inside of me. I've gotten better at creativity over the years for sure. I can certainly see progress. You know, I've worked at getting better at this, but you know, thinking about coming up with a large painting concept right now that isn't just a reference of a photo I like or a portrait with some sort of twist or anything like that, like it's terrifying. It's very, very scary and intimidating to me. So I had this thought that what I need to do is like mainline the inspiration right to my brain. I really like fish. I've drawn quite a few of them. Fish and ocean life are an abundant source of inspiration. And so I thought, let's go to the aquarium and just look at them. I brought my sketchbook, like I mentioned, but I honestly hardly even had the intention of doing any art while I was there. The purpose of being there was essentially field research. I wanted to collect as much video and photo inspiration as possible so I could look back at it later. And then in the comfort of my own home and with all my supplies around me, I could look back at all of that and then feel those same feelings again and then make the art. At the aquarium, I really just just walked around and tried to really pay attention to how I felt, what I was drawn to. I tried to experience the experience as much as possible, basically. I really tried to be in the moment. Although I will say this is the most filming I have ever done in public and it was very hard. And looking back, I definitely was like very anxious the whole time. And as a result, I had major tunnel vision. Like literally, I refused to even turn my head in any direction to keep people from away from my periphery so I could like try and pretend no one else was there and that they couldn't see me. So like all I was really seeing was what was like directly in front of me. Like I definitely didn't get to experience it as much as I would have liked to, but it's a start, you know, it'll take me some time to build the confidence. I think I, I still have fun. I feel like I did learn a bit for next time. I think taking notes of what I found important while I was at the location was really vital. Um, I'm really glad I did that. I definitely looked back on those notes. I will continue to look back on those notes. And it gave me a chance to collect myself while I was there. I think next time, as long as it is feasible, I should really also try to do some art on location as well. I don't know for sure, but I feel like that would have been useful for the overall process. Like while I was there, I wasn't doing art on purpose so I could focus solely on research, collecting references, but I also didn't really like research either. Like, yeah, I looked at cool fish and I took pictures and video, but I didn't really learn anything or even take note of what any of the fish were called. So I didn't walk away feeling like I had learned anything new or had had, like I didn't have any starting points for researching at home. You know, there was this one certain fish I really liked and now if I ever wanna draw them again, I won't be able to search them up. I feel like I didn't do as much as I could have. You know, this is the first time I'm doing this, so it's understandable that I didn't do it right the first time, but I definitely feel like I either need to commit to genuinely really researching, talking to people, learning information, or I need to focus on the artistic experience, which I think should include doing art on location. I'm filming in public. Pretty successful. I'd say I got lots of, this is so blown out, deal with it. <laughs> lots of inspiration, lots of great references, very excited to go home, look at them, use them, and get some get some doodles down. I took some notes while I was there um, of some stuff that I kept finding I was like really drawn to and really liking. Uh, fish are so cool. I could definitely see a lot of potential for like a series, like about what, I don't know, like is it particularly new and interesting? No, but um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A little nerve wracking to be filming in public, but cool overall i hope this is i hope i got stuff that's usable i don't know oh my god i'm just okay okay yeah i feel like i got, I got really good stuff so i definitely feel inspired but like the, this is what i always struggle with is i feel so inspired and like i feel it inside of me but then like what do i draw like i couldn't tell you a single thing that i want to draw except for just redrawing the pictures that i took but that's the thing is i don't want to do that the purpose is not to just redraw pictures that i've taken it's to take those as a jumping point and do something with them so that's what i want to like i want to go home and just like experience 
the reference photos, just like look at it all, soak it in, and then do stream of consciousness drawing. Like I took notes about stuff that interested me and I just wanna like pour those feelings onto the page in whatever in whatever way that means. Like I don't know what that means, I don't know how to do that, that's not something that I normally do. So it's gonna be rough, it's gonna look ugly, but uh, I have to learn, I have to practice, and that's what this is. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna just, like whatever I was feeling, just try to represent that in some way on in a sketchbook spread and we'll see what comes of that and then we'll take notes on what i did there um and see if there's anything of substance <laughs> so let's go i'm going to interrupt this little adventure for a moment to talk about today's sponsor squarespace squarespace is an all-in-one website platform that allows entrepreneurs freelancers creatives to stand out online squarespace makes it really easy to create a website that fits your exact needs squarespace has a wide variety of templates that you can choose from when designing your website they're professional sleek beautiful and they have a lot of different needs in mind so no matter what your business is or what website you're trying to create you'll find a template that kind of fits your needs already but these templates are totally customizable they're very flexible so so you don't have to stick with like just what the template gives you. They have Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design software built right into Squarespace. And essentially how it works is it is a drag and drop website design tool. It literally couldn't be any easier to make a beautiful, professional website. So obviously it's really easy to make your website look beautiful and function well with the templates, with the Fluid Engine. But even beyond just like the basics, Squarespace really has everything you need for your business. You can put your online store on your Squarespace website. You can also put member only areas. So with these member only areas, you can make certain areas of your website password protected, only able to be accessed by these members, which is a great way to connect with customers, your audience, better monetize your content, and just like connect with your community. Overall, Squarespace really does have everything you need in one place, whether you are a content creator, you're an artist, you want a portfolio, maybe you want to start your store or you already have a bunch of different websites scattered across the internet, you can kind of put them all in one place now. If that sounds interesting to you, if you have some goals for your business this year or you want to take your business to the next level, you want to start something new, definitely check out Squarespace. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and whenever you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash littlestarnerd and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring. Thank you for checking out Squarespace. Now, let's get back into the video. So this section is the part that is obviously very inspired by Orla Stevens. Watching that video of hers where she did this process, you know, she had her inspiration up on screen while she painted was honestly mind blowing and life changing for me. Like it really, really like opened my mind. She's an abstract artist and based on my first experience, which is obviously very limited and very difficult for me, uh, based on that experience with this method, I feel like it might work a bit better for abstractionism, for abstract art. I think it might be a bit easier to go really quickly and just like look at your inspiration and then be like, okay, let me put it down on paper. Um, I definitely wanna keep doing it. I think it was and will be helpful. I think it, it, there's a lot of potential here. I really like the process and the technique of it. I don't know if it did much for me today, this time. I felt really paralyzed looking at the open sketchbook and I found myself really, really frustrated with myself, with the process. My goal was for this sketchbook work to be super stream of conscious, to be very impulsive and flow state intuitive and, you know, I, I just wanted to let it flow, like, from the video into my brain and out onto the paper. I didn't want there to be any thinking involved. But I have never, ever worked that way. I literally, I don't, I don't know how to work that way. I've never done it, and I've never really necessarily tried to do it. So there was a lot of hesitation, a lot of overthinking, and a lot of my brain just feeling really empty. I think it's going to take a lot of work to make my brain think in that way, you know, to interpret what I'm seeing as images on my own. I can't even tell you what it was that was going through my brain as I watched and I tried to draw. Like, I, I couldn't even tell you what my process is, you know, that makes it so hard for me to get anything on the page. It'll definitely take time. It'll take a few rounds at least. Uh, but who knows, like maybe 
it could be really cool to come back to all this footage from the aquarium and see what I can do down the road after some practice. Maybe we'll see some real time progress. I am really, really looking forward to putting in actual work and seeing how my ability to do this stuff progresses and hopefully gets better. It's something I've always been frustrated with and I honestly have no idea how to tackle this issue of like, it's a very specific thing and I didn't know what to do about it, but I'm really hoping that this exercise works. And of course, I'm hoping that it leads to the ultimate goal of figuring out what I wanna make paintings about. Okay. Okay. I have a lot to say. So let me collect my thoughts. Um, so you just, I just finished going through the footage and making like little scribbly notes to myself. I want to go through these notes and kind of organize my thoughts and really write down like what I found interesting, compelling, what I could work on piece ideas. Cause I did come across a few things that I would like to explore. Um, this is rough. There is a part of me that like, like I've gone through all the footage and a lot of it I sat and just like looked at cause I thought it was really pretty and I felt the inspiration and I felt motivated and I, I could feel, I could feel what I wanted but I couldn't put that out at all. Like I had no idea how to interpret that or make something out of it. And that's, I mean, that's what this is for is I'm not gonna be good at this and it's going to be a lot of like, this is research and practice. Like the point of this is to get better at the stuff that I feel like I'm not good at. Like that's what I feel like I'm not good at is I can feel this inspiration. I was listening to like, the same music that was going on at the aquarium and I had really felt like I f like I felt it you know what I mean I was like wow this is like the perfect thing to be listening to it was making me feel so like I was so hopeful and calm and peaceful and it was wonderful so I, I put the music on and I was watching the footage and I could feel the inspiration but I didn't know what to do with it or what to interpret that as other than just like drawing what I was seeing what's really hard especially is a lot of the stuff that really really interested me and I got a lot of like close-ups of and what I kept being drawn to was like movement and like organic stuff so like the the stingrays gills whatever it is like opening and, and closing um that I found so fascinating and and the way coral moved and the way leaves moved and the way fish moved in schools all of that is what really really interested me like a lot of other things did too but like a lot of the movement is what i found really really inspiring and i don't know how to translate that like in a piece like i don't know what to do with that so um yeah there's like a lot of stuff here like i said i want to organize it i i don't know like <laughs> I, I feel like I should go back through it again and I need to like do some better art because I feel like for a video this isn't good enough and that's I feel like a huge mental block that I need to get over is like this isn't supposed to look good like that's the point is this is not the art process part this is the research part and like that this is just what my art is going to look like for that you know what I mean it's this is what you get but it's hard for me to like feel okay with that because I, I always feel like when I do art it has to be like good enough for you to like watch all the way through um uh, but like the point of this video is not to make good art it's to learn to make good art and to make my own art um so let me talk about some of the things that I found really interesting I don't know how this video is going to work out how much of the aquarium footage you saw um, if there's a voiceover for that, I'm assuming there was. But let me tell you some of the things that I came away with this. And I'll make notes while I go. So the things that I kept finding that I was really, really liking, um, and the notes that I took there, is that I love the, like, the layers and the eclecticness and chaoticness of it all. The fact that there was just so much going on in every aquarium and so many fish and the way it all interacted together. And it was, like, so many elements. Um, and that's something that I found, like, I call it visual clutter. I, I'm sure that's a real term. I'm not saying I invented it, but like, I don't know what the, t I don't know. Uh, that's something that I've always liked in pieces in art is uh, I 
I'm drawn to pieces that have a lot going on and have a lot of visual information um, packed into one space. And so I'm not surprised that that is something that I was really, really drawn to. The issue that I, I'm thinking about like, okay, how do I make a piece from that? Is that I hate, I'm not patient. I don't take my time. So that's like a huge, I don't know, thing there. I also love the vibrant colors. Obviously the, all the fish were interesting. Like I love fish and I thought all of them were cool, but the ones that like were obviously the most beautiful to me were the ones with just like absolutely crazy color seeing like real like naturally occurring fluorescence and like neons was so insane they're brighter than you could ever possibly like i literally thought that they were actually glowing and that was just so freaking cool i also i knew this already but another thing that i found really um cool like to look at i was just as drawn to the environments that the fish were in as i was to the fish and like the life i was really into the coral and the plants and stuff um and again the movement of them so things that i definitely like the four takeaways that i have here are movement texture clutter and the eyes eyes were huge for me the like the thing that i kept looking at no matter how cool a fish was like it wasn't as cool as a fish with weird eyes i think it was puffer fish um they had the most crazy eyes that i've ever seen they were like these giant clear orbs with like a pupil really deep set into it and the top was like pearly like the clear part was like it was so insane it was so cool to look at and i was just having like i, I just thought it was so cool so having gone through the footage and pulling out things that i thought were interesting I definitely I think there's something here is it enough for like a series is it enough for multiple pieces with substance I don't know but I think I could make some cool pieces possibly I think it's worth the exploration I have this one doodle here which I actually love it's just like a silhouette of like a giant fish the, the one thing that I got the overall which let me write this down the, the biggest takeaway, the feeling that I had when I was there, the feeling that I get when I watch this stuff, and the feeling that I'm going to express is the feeling of being so small and insignificant and helpless and how good that can feel. The feeling of being overwhelmed and trapped, but at the same time like set free and inhibitionless. Get your inhibitions, feel the... I like looking at the fish, like it was just this constant overstimulation of the coolest things that I didn't want to look away from. I kept looking at the tanks and asking myself like, surely those tanks are not like big enough, right? The feeling of like seeing fish that are like bigger than me. And it, it was just crazy. Like you, you look at this big blue tank and you feel like so tiny and it's so freeing to feel that way to me. Like I love the ocean and I love going really far out and looking around and seeing nothing around you and just feeling so tiny. And it's like nothing matters and there are things that could eat you in one bite and i love that feeling i also going back to like this doodle i love like the fact that like the fish like my toxic trait is thinking that and this is real this is not a joke that like any sort of predator like i could befriend <laughs> and like i one of the other things that i love about the fish is that like i they are fish now that they don't i believe that you know fish are intelligent creatures but they are not like my friend <laughs> But like I, they're not, ugh. predators would eat me, right? And I still feel like, I, I love the sense that all these fish don't give a shit about you, could kill you, but also maybe they're just your pal. Like that weird feeling of like the, these dead fish eyes, I can reflect any sort of emotion I want into them. And like this doodle of kind of like, is it intimidating? Is it scary? Is it chill? Like who knows? Did that make sense? I don't know. The other thing that I loved was reflections in the water, texture patterns in the water, water. That is really hard to replicate and do. Do I have the patience for it personally? I couldn't tell you. Again, plant life. I did a couple of doodles of coral and plants. I also have these doodles of the jellyfish. Watching the footage of the jellyfish, when I was there, I was really focused on just like, I, you got to pet them. So I was like focused on that part. But watching the footage back, it's like, cr the feeling that it gives me is so crazy. Like they're so, the way they just like, I don't know. I don't even know how to put it into words. Like I can feel it and I don't know how to express it. Just that like, I don't know. I felt like love, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to put it any other way. I just felt like love and peace and unity. That sounds so crazy. <laughs> It was just jellyfish swimming, but like, I don't know, it it was crazy. Um, Yeah, so water, color, light shining through the water. I love this idea of, for a piece, I had got footage of me. There was like a blue light shining down, like of water, and I stood under it and I loved the way it hit me. And I was thinking like a person standing on the bottom of an ocean floor or whatever, right, in water. And it's very blue. I didn't, it didn't draw it very blue, but it's very blue. And then there's light shining down and it's hitting them and dappled on the ground. And then like fish in the darker part, just like, like 
facing. No reason, no explanation, just thought it was cool. I also loved, I was watching footage of the fish and I loved, again, the way that they layer and the way it's so like chaotic and there's so many of them. And I ended up drawing them in this circle swirl pattern and I thought that was like kind of cool. Like that could be something. This is where, I don't know, I don't love this. This is a bit more of just like kind of drawing. I don't know, I don't like this page. It's fine, I don't need to, that's not what it's for. Um, I like this idea of a fish being way too big for its tank. I don't know if that would be a piece. It could be, it could be something like really cool and really realistic. Um, it could also just be like a doodle and a sticker. I love the colors. I would love to do like a really simple slash yet realistic, uh, like color blocked piece of someone just like looking into an aquarium with the cool lighting and, and the fish inside. Uh, I did a study of study of these scales and then a fish here. Um, nothing major here, nothing really to pull from here, but I feel like there's a lot of good stuff on this page, which is really neat. But I don't think I pulled, I feel like I was filled with so much, again, it's, this is practice, right? Like this is the first time I'm doing this. This is step one. This is step one of step one. I feel like I didn't pull enough for how much inspiration I felt and how big it all felt to be there and to experience it. And for how much interest I have in this subject, I feel like I didn't pull enough from my my sources like i don't i don't think i have anything of major substance here certainly not a series i don't know that i could do a series out of just aquarium fish that's fine i didn't i didn't think i'd be able to you know i want to do a lot of these explorations um and you know maybe they'll mash together in the end but I think this is good progress. I wish I had pulled more, but that's fine. I don't have practice at doing this. I'm not good at pulling inspiration from things. It, this is something that I've always, always struggled with. So now I'm working on it. I'm doing actionable steps to get better at it. And that's great. So I feel, I feel like I'm a little underwhelmed. Um, I had really high hopes. I don't know what this video is going to turn out as. I hope it's good. I feel like I wanted a lot. I, I don't like know what, at the same time, I don't know what I was expecting because I knew exactly what I was going to do. And it, it's, I'm following all the steps of everything I thought I was going to do. I had no intention of even drawing a single finished thing in here. So I don't know why it feels so incomplete. I think just because I expect myself to be better at this than I am. You know, I get the critique all the time of like, if I say I'm not creative, people are like, yes, you are. Like clearly you're creative. And obviously I am creative to a degree. Like I can do creative things. But when I say creative, I mean like I'm not good at come. And again, I know that nothing is original. That's the other thing I, I get told all the time is like, well, you know, nothing's original. I know. But like I, the only time I feel confident in what I'm drawing is when I'm referencing something like very directly and even then you know it, it, that piece doesn't feel like mine i want to be able to make art that is mine but that's something that i'm just not good at coming up with ideas for art i've never felt that art and i still don't feel this way um i'm trying to move in this direction just for the ability to kind of get into the traditional art space i don't feel this but i've never felt that art needs to have some sort of meaning or message behind it in order to be good or have inherent value and so i've never like i think it's kind of pretentious when people force meaning onto paintings like i can do it retroactively and be like oh here's where i see this but i don't make art with the intention of like expressing anything in specific most of the time there are some pieces like especially the, the series where i like um work with nostalgia with my mom and her art like her photography like that has meaning to me but like am i trying to like spread a message to anyone like no so getting into a series where i want it to be cohesive and i want it to have some sort of meaning whether it has like a message like i don't know just i don't even know that means yet <laughs> but I, I want there to be some sort of substance to it like this is really new for me and really really hard to come up with my own original thoughts i'm really not used to doing this in my art uh, but I'm I'm ready to make the change. I feel good about this. You know, it's not, again, I, it's not where I wanted to be, but I think I expect too much for myself. Therefore, I'm gonna say I'm really happy with what I was able to accomplish. Yay. <laughs> So this video is very different than anything I've done. I, as of now, have no idea what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you enjoyed this format. This is something that I would love to continue doing um, if it worked. I mean, I'll do it by myself, but make videos out of it. This format kind of worked, or if you have any feedback or you liked it, you didn't like it, let me know. Because I definitely want to keep going out in the world and exploring things that make me feel inspired and look for look for some ideas out there. And you can let me know if that's worth sharing with you. But yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was really, really cool. A very interesting journey. Like this whole process from start to finish was very interesting, very eye-opening for me to see like really how weak in this skill I am. And I'm excited about the future and what that what that may bring with, with practice, what will I be able to do? Thank you so much for coming along with me. Uh, it was really, really fun. It was really cool. I've never filmed that much in public. So that was crazy, very nerve wracking. Just a lot going on, just a very different video.
video. I really, I don't know even what to say. Like, I don't know what's been said and what hasn't been said, so I don't know what to say. I'm just gonna say thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out Squarespace. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring. Um, have a wonderful day. See you next time.